Hi everyone and welcome to this video where I'll be introducing you to Nine, a free and open source data analytics reporting and integration platform. You can use Nine without coding skills for image processing, deep learning and so more. One of Nine's major strengths is its interdisciplinary approach. It seamlessly integrates with coding languages such as Python, Java, ImageA and R. Nime allows everyone with its own programming background to share and collaborate. It's like an anti-bubble tower. So let's get started. So here are the data I'm gonna use in this video. Uh, they are similar to uh, data I used in another video about Omero. Um, so they are almost uh, four, uh, 400 pixels of uh, beetroot leaves uh, with, uh, with more or less disease, just, uh, just like this one. I also have uh, corresponding masks, so uh, as you can see for each picture, you, you have a mask uh, with uh, in white uh, the leaves and the disease and in black uh, the, the background. Finally, I have also a CSV file with, uh, with all the images and some metadata, such as uh, the year where the, the picture uh, was taken, uh, the disease, small or big, and the lighting, low, high or medium. The goal of this video is to show you how we could import this data into Nime, run a query on it, and then do some image processing such as thresholding and comparing our results to the masks I've shown you with uh, some dice coefficient calculations. For educational purposes, each step has been done in a different language, so you can see how powerful Nime can be, for example, to switch from Java to R. Okay, so this is how Nime looks like. So you have on the left uh, some files which are called workflows um, with your own workflows and also some example workflows developed by the community to, to learn at your own pace. So uh, the workflow I'm gonna present to you now is uh, for image processing and uh, it looks like that. So you have a lot of queries which corresponds to, uh, to a node. So with, uh, with one node, you will, uh, you will do one process. And it can be a lot of different processes. For example, you can, can browse here uh, some threshold nodes uh, and you can just drag and drop and then connect nodes uh, between them. And uh, you can configure with a, a right click, uh, choose your, your method. Uh, if you want to process channels also, you can, you can configure as, as you want. You can also import some nodes to, to write some scripts. Uh, you can import uh, Python nodes uh, just like this one, and then you can uh, you can write your your Python Python codes, and you can do that also with uh, with Java or ImageA and so on. Here, uh, for now it's empty, but uh, for each node uh, we will have a table a table uh, produced, and it will be here. It's it's how Nime works with uh, with this table. So let's start with the beginning. Uh, so the import part. Um, as you can see, each node has uh, three colors, uh, a red one, uh, just like this one, a yellow one, and uh, a green one. Uh, when it's red, uh, it's, you, you, can't, you can't launch it, you can't execute it, you have to configure it. When it's yellow, you can execute it because, uh, because uh, previous nodes are okay, uh, and you can execute it, and when it's, it's, uh, it's red, uh, you can, uh, it's, it's in green. So uh, I have already imported all the images and the CSV, uh, the CSV file. So as you can see here in the table, uh, we have an ID for each image which corresponds to, to names and then uh, an image uh, which, is, uh, which is like a, like a, a path object. Uh, you, can, you can use a joiner in order to, to join uh, the CSV file. And the uh, and the image you imported, so I execute it. Uh, it turns to to uh, green, and then in the same table I have uh, the CSV file and the image uh, and the images. Okay, um, then uh, this is called a meta node. Uh, so meta node is a node with other nodes. Uh, when I double click. Uh, I can I can see uh, I can see other nodes. It's a way to to make a workflow uh, more easy to read. Uh, and in this meta node, uh, I process some queries. So 
Okay, so you can uh, you can say if you want only uh, pictures uh, taken in 2020, 2021, or 2022, or everything. Uh, for example, we'll check uh, 2020 uh, with I don't know small diseases and uh, with all lightings, for example. And then you will have a use table here with uh, only small diseases and uh, and taken in 2020, but with uh, with all the the lighting types. So to do a query like that, uh, in this meta node, uh, I used uh, the, the Java snippet in order to produce uh, produce uh, this uh, this uh, this window uh, this window where, where where you can choose uh, the, the the type you want. Uh, so it's a uh, it's a Gibson pane uh, show show optional here uh, this one. Another powerful feature of Nime is that you can uh, view the images whenever you want. So you can you can just check in live uh, how how the the images are. Uh, for example, you can just add uh, an image viewer node uh, where you want and run it uh, by executing an open views, and you can see uh, our CSV file with uh, with yeah this is lighting for each picture and uh, and the image uh, the, the the actual image. The thing is, um, I have uh, images with high, uh, high lighting and uh, other with very low lighting. So I need to, to normalize all that. And you can do this uh, with ImageJ, for example. For example, we can, uh, we can use ImageJ. So this is an ImageJ macro um, a node. And, uh, and you can write the code. So I just need uh, one line uh, in this case. But you can also import uh, Every every code you, you want from uh, from image day. so I run it, and then I I can uh, open the images, and I can see a new column with uh, with normalized images. So it can be very very useful uh, uh, in this case, for example. Then with these images, we can process to a threshold. So we could use image J, Python, or other other ways to, to threshold. But I show you with native. Uh, with native uh, Nime nodes, because it's also possible with uh, an extension, uh, Nime extension, uh, you can install in community nodes uh, Nime image processing, and then you will have access to a lot of uh, lot of nodes to 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 process uh, process images. So the first thing to do is to split channels, uh, and then I will rename the the clones, and I can see that I have uh, three new clones: uh, red, green, blue. You know, with uh, with the uh, channel speed, uh, so then we can we can uh, threshold uh, this new this new clones, and then uh, see our thresholded uh, thresholded images. Okay, and then uh, we can uh, we can uh, add uh, add uh, all the images in order to process uh, process to a, a new uh, uh, a final final uh, uh, image thresholded, just like that. Okay. Then, from uh, this threshold, uh, we will be able to, to convert um, our, our image objects into real PNG uh, with uh, those two nodes, and uh, and then we'll be able to to uh, to write them and download download them um, in a specific in a specific folder you you will set. Uh, so I execute it, and uh, finally we can do uh, something with uh, with uh, the ground truth. That is to say, the the masked images uh, I showed you uh, just before. So uh, we'll be able to to join that into our current uh, current table, and then uh, you can see here we have our uh, original image, uh, the image normalized, the image thresholded, and then our ground truth. So um, as you can see, the ground truth uh, detects a lot of uh, leaves, while the threshold uh, not not as much, uh, but we'll be able to, to quantify that uh, with uh, with other scripts. We can use Python, for example. And uh, here I have a I have a Python uh, code uh, where I uh, I load the images and then calculate uh, the dice coefficient uh, just here. So I can uh, run that node uh, and then it will load. You will have a new column with some dice coefficients. So as you may know, uh, we 
we set uh, a required minimum around uh, 70%. So we are far away from this 70%, but it's just for educational purposes I use uh, this example, so that, that's quite normal. But we can we can check we can uh, we can uh, process some uh, statistical analysis uh, uh, on that dice to verify it, see if it's significantly different from uh, from uh, seventy percent. Uh, and to do that, we can use R, for example. So I have a, a R script uh, just here, uh, which will process to a, to a t test uh, with uh, a control uh, a control sample. Um, as a, a normal distribution uh, around uh, around uh, seventy percent, and uh, and with the, the same uh, the same uh, standard deviation, so uh, I can finally run that and uh, and see uh, a p value uh, less uh, than uh, five percent. So we can say uh, we can say that we are significantly. Uh, worse <laughs> than the the ground truth, so the the model used uh, for the segmentation for the ground truth is more efficient than a simple threshold. And, uh, and thankfully, finally, let me show you two of the nodes. Uh, we have here the timer info, uh, which is a, a node very useful if you want to quantify uh, the time uh, the time uh, your nodes uh, take. Uh, for example. Uh, here uh, you have uh, in uh, in milliseconds uh, the time for each script. So for my quite small data set, uh, it's not so long, uh, but it can be very useful. And uh, finally, uh, there is uh, also an Omero integration, uh, allowing you to browse for for uh, Omero uh, Omero Lake located images. But it's only available for um, uh, 5.2 uh, version maximum. And uh, my own server is uh, on the, the, the latest uh, version, which is uh, 5.6, so I couldn't use it, but uh, maybe it will be uh, also useful for, for you. So you will be able to find this, uh, this workflow online uh, on my uh, public, uh, public uh, space. Uh, my account is Aurélien Valenti. Um, so you can just drag and drop, uh, li like this one, drag and drop, into into Nime and will be able to uh, to just do what I what I did uh, in this video. Uh, be careful! Um, I have imported uh, quite different uh, images, uh, so don't uh, don't reset uh, these nodes uh, because, as you can see here, I have imported um, uh, less images and quite uh, quite modified uh, one. But you can also process them. Um, Everything, so it's already proceed. You can just uh, just execute uh, the image viewer node, uh, and finally you will you will see, uh, for example, this one. Uh, the threshold lead images uh, with the ground truth. It's uh, quite similar to to what we had just before, and uh, finally the you have also uh, a p value less uh, than uh, five percent. So let's see a comparison between uh, Nime and uh, Omero. Um, so if you want more information about Omero, you can see the, the video related I, uh, I also produced on this uh, YouTube channel. So concerning the integration, uh, both um, have uh, links with a lot of applications, just Python, PG, R, MATLAB, and others. But for Nime, it's only a specific node. You can just drag and drop uh, into uh, this software. While with Omero, uh, I'd say it's more a link into uh, the, the third-party tool. Uh, for example, for Fiji, it's a Fiji plugin. Um, also for Napari, uh, and yes, it's it's quite different. Um, about the pickup, uh, Nime is very more end user friendly, so it's um, easier to, to take in hand and you just have to, to download the, the software. While with Omero, um, you will need uh, to install your own server if you want uh, admin, um, admin authorization because uh, you can only use a demo server, a demo server provided by, uh, by Open Microsoft Environment, uh, which developed uh, Omero. And uh, you will need more coding skills uh, to to install uh, the server. Uh, so yeah, you should take that into account. 
uh, concerning uh, the graphic user interface, um, with Nime, uh, as you've seen uh, just before, uh, you have a lot of nodes and, uh, and some different windows. Uh, with Omero, it's more like an image viewer. Uh, and you can or organize all your images um, in data sets and uh, projects and see some information about the images uh, on, the, on the right panel. Uh, finally, I'd say that NIME is more for multidisciplinarity uh, because you can uh, code in easily in a lot of languages and you can visualize what you're doing. While with Omero, it's more like image management and uh, also uh, his main um, pros is uh, that you can uh, use a server and access to images even remotely um, and with uh, with Nime you, you can't do that. So um, I'd say Nime and Omero uh, are quite complementary and uh, the, the best thing to do uh, will be the, the Omero, um, Omero integration into Nime but uh, the thing is it's only available for all versions of Omero because it's not up to date and uh, I, I wasn't able to try it uh, but uh, I think uh, this is the best trade-off between Omero and Nime. You can, you can use both. So to conclude this video, I'd like to thank you for watching. Don't hesitate to check out my workflow by following the link just in the description below. And uh, also my video uh, on Omero, where I uh, crucially images from a query result, pretty similar to what I did here, but in another way. So uh, check it out and have fun with Nine and Omero.